We first met filmmaker James Lance two years ago when he appeared on our show to promote his documentary, Bright Green Nothing, the story of how a Vermont farmer who produced t-shirts proclaiming, eat more kale, was sued by Chick-fil-A for copyright infringement. It was a long, drawn-out process that the Vermonter eventually won. James is currently working on a new project, Angry Gay Grandpa, a series of stories about the suicides of trans youth in today's anti-trans culture. Let's take a look. Can I be angry for a moment? Last year in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, in less than one year, three trans teens died by suicide. They were Braden Snyder, who was just 17 years old, Taya Cassidy, who was 18, and River Olmsted, who was 17 years old. This is a profound tragedy, and I can only begin to imagine the depth of pain and loss that was brought to these families and to this community. But what really pisses me off is an even greater tragedy is occurring in that these three teen suicides have been largely ignored. Now, if a gunman had done this and killed three teens, it would be considered a mass shooting, and, and it would make national news. There'd be prayer vigils, lighted candles, piles of flowers and notes, and a massive manhunt would be underway to find the killer. But none of these things happened. Instead, something else that commonly happens in mass shootings occurred. Possible active shooter at the top. After every mass shooting, there's still shots being fired. We hear a common refrain. People with mental illness are getting guns. Our inability to deal with mental illness. Mental illness and hatred pulls the trigger. In her eulogy for River Olmsted, Sister Dottie Almany, St. Peter's Lutheran Church in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, said River's suicide was due to something oddly familiar. In River's enemy was mental illness. In an email response to my question of whether her claim of mental illness is the reason for River's death was an attempt to tamp down the controversy over River's gender identification, Sister Dottie emailed me this. I have known River since she was very young and know the struggle she has had with mental illness, so my remarks in my sermon were not an attempt to cover up her gender identity. <sighs> Sister Dottie, I'm so sorry, but I don't think I believe you. Wow. James Lance, come back in. <laughs> Hi, Amber. How you doing? Fine, James. So good to have you back. All right. First of all, why Angry Gay Grandpa? Well, first of all, let me say thank you so much for having me. I'm really quite honored, and, and you're looking quite fetching tonight. Um, and why angry gay? <laughs> why angry gay grandpa? Well, I guess. Well, first of all, it's a, it's a it's a title that my sons uh, recommended. Um, the angry part is that I. My job, my goal is to evoke anger from the audience. Is to evoke anger from the people who become aware of this story. This is an absolute tragedy that is happening across the country. A lot of LGBTQ youth are uh, feeling so impacted by the, the wave of anti-trans and anti-LGBTQ rhetoric and legislation that has come out of Washington the last couple of years. 500 uh, legislations last year, almost 500 this year, and it's having an impact. Um, I think we saw recently uh, Nex Benedict in uh, Oklahoma, a young trans person who, uh, who uh, died by suicide. That was obviously something that came out of the anti-trans rhetoric. When Lancaster, the story that I've been following, it's not one team, but now we're up to actually, as of today, five uh, young people who have killed themselves over... Uh, less than an 18 month period. And that's just that's just unacceptable. And and I I don't want to be so angry so much. I want to offload that onto the audience. I want the audience to to feel the anger that I'm feeling because this is not right. There's something really, really wrong with this. And uh I'm I really want to get this message out there. Also too, it's uh I'm a grandpa, <laughs> and I'm uh, uh, recently, uh, well, not recently, uh, my granddaughter is almost six years old now, um, and, uh, and I, came out, I came out as gay uh, uh, two years ago at National Coming Out Day. So it kind of all works, angry gay grandpa, so nice, uh, nice alliteration, too. Uh, for the past year and a half, we've been highlighting uh, some of the anti-trans, anti-gay legislation that's been going on in the country by talking to state representatives and state senators and uh, drag and trans um, victims of hate in their states. Um, why? Why is this going on? 
Well, you know, I'm not, I, I want to be clear and honest. I, I, I'm not an expert on the uh, political dynamics that's happening around the country. I'm really not. All that I'm keenly aware of is that in red and rural states, red states mostly, um, GOP, uh, Republican, conservative politicians are pushing an agenda uh, out there that is very anti-trans and anti-LGBTQ. As I understand it, when gay marriage became uh, national, became national law, it was okay for everybody to get married. Um, as I understand it, Republicans were looking for another wedge issue, and this became a really, uh, a, a really potent um, and mean, <laughs> mean spirited wedge issue that their constituency responded to. Um, and so in state houses across the country, just like what we're seeing in Lancaster, uh, state legislators are pushing these bills out there. And some of them are so cruel and so mean. And um, it's, it's getting down to the youth. It's, it's basically what's happening is it's licensing bigotry. It's licensing anti-trans uh, uh, rhetoric. Um, and kids are suffering in schools. They're being bullied. Uh, and they're feeling completely oppressed. Uh, the Trevor Project. Are you familiar with the Trevor Project? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Uh, the Trevor Project recently uh, put out statistics on the harm that is being done to LGBTQ youth. And it's really quite extraordinary. 41% of all LGBTQ youth uh, seriously attempted, seriously considered attempting suicide in the last year. 41%. Think about that. That's extraordinary. Um, and then 14%, this is also extraordinary, 14% of all LGBTQ youth actually attempted suicide. Um, and unfortunately, some of those youth are succeeding. And uh, I, just, I just find this to be absolutely 100% unacceptable. And, uh, and it pisses me off. <laughs> and, and I want to do something about it. Um, you know, I, I, I feel like that there's something that I can do about it. I want to do about it. I'm I'm so um, proud of my state of Vermont um, yes. and the the uh, well in, in a bunch of different ways. But uh, my son, who uh, is uh, is also queer, um, when he was going through the coming out process, the extraordinary organization here called Outright Vermont yes. uh, really protected him and made that transition for him uh, into adulthood really so much easier. And overall, our state has been so um, accepting, uh, so welcoming uh, and helpful to him in so many ways. Well, that's not the case in all states no. and especially in red and rural states, a lot of them red and rural states, just which is very similar to the upbringing that I had and the background that I have. So that, that also makes me doubly um, impassioned about this is that I feel like I know where I came from, which was from a conservative, Christian, religious background in a rural, red and rural state. And I know the impact that it had on me. And uh, I know the impact that it's having. I feel certain I know the impact that it's having on kids today. And it's unacceptable. I, it's absolutely unacceptable. Um, any kid's suicide is unacceptable, but um, that it is being caused and is prevented, preventable, be, uh, because uh, um, politicians are using it as a uh, wedge issue. I just, I find it completely unacceptable. Anyway, I, I'll get off my soapbox. <laughs> no, no, that's fine. I love your soapbox. All right. <laughs> uh, Angry Gay Gra Grandpa is a series of episodes. Tell us about yes. the episodes. Well, basically what I'm doing is is I'm, I'm trying to find a place to create in public. Um, it's, it's kind of a, a, a newer kind of uh, idea is that in the past, uh, somebody like me, a documentary filmmaker, might take all my footage and take all of the story and just and, and work on it behind closed doors and not let anybody know about it. I know you're familiar with the uh, Bright Green Nothing movie. Um, you know, that took 10 years and I, I was behind closed doors and I was I was working on that you know, a lot. And people thought, well, nothing was happening, but actually a lot was happening. This is kind of different. I've, I've, I've become aware of this story. 
I think it's an incredible story. Lancaster is an incredible place. Uh, it's rich with uh, so much activity that's going on. And I want to create a story out of it. And so the Angry Gay Grandpa series is basically a chapter by chapter series of the process of creating whatever this is going to be, whether it's going to be a documentary, a commercial, a narrative film, uh, and it's right there. And I, uh, I, I have to say, I'm not in, I'm not entirely comfortable with the process because this this is this TikTokization of uh, you know of 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 being in front of the camera. I'm much more comfortable being behind the camera, but uh, being in front of the camera is something I'm not entirely comfortable with. But it is something, it is the way that we're telling stories these days. And it's the way that I've started telling this story. So I've done four chapters so far. Uh, the first chapter covered the first three uh, suicides of the young people. Uh, the second chapter was a little bit more personal. Uh, the third chapter started to connect it with uh, the GOP, the conservatives, and a little bit made an analogy with film. Each one of the episodes, I try, try to make an analogy with movies because I'm a filmmaker and I love film. And uh, the third, the fourth chapter, the last one, uh, is the longest and uh, covers the latest young man that uh, committed suicide, a trans man by the name of Ashton Clatterbuck, who is just an extraordinary young man. I went to his memorial service and um, was very moved by the outpouring of love and loss that this community felt. And um, it's, it's, it's a loss that, is not just being suffered by this family in this community. It's yeah. a loss that all of us are feeling. Absolutely all of us should feel deeply. Uh, this was an extraordinary young man who was politically active and and I just it's just a loss. It's a profound loss. And I'm I'm at a loss for words at how to convey uh, the importance of uh, of us knowing that story and getting angry because in my mind, that came out of, in some fashion, the politicization of kids, of trans youth, of LGBTQ youth, had an impact on this young person, as it does, as it did on all of these uh, young people. And um, I, I find it absolutely unacceptable. And uh, I want to do something about it. Anyway, that's that's so far as the four chapters. And you are, James. We're going to take a short break, but when we come back, we're going to talk about how people can help you in your cause and another thing that's happening in your life as well. We'll be right back. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Wow. Wasn't part one incredible? James is uh, such such an integral part of the community and conveying such an important message uh, through his writing, his playwriting, his directing, and most crucially, the films. Um I can't, I can't wait for part two. Uh, but hey, let's bring Russell back in. Hey, Dwayne, you are hey. so correct. What a great interview. And James is just a wonderful person. He really is. Uh, so I uh, talked about the Bustiers earlier. They help us out. And the other thing that helps us out is our store. And you can find the Amber Live store at amberlive.tv. And we have incredible products, including this Consider a career in hardcore pornography mug, along with lots of other designs and lots of other products, all available at Amber Live TV. So if you are get a good giggle out of that, or if you want to go in, there's lots of LGBTQ themed products. There's the whole Vintage Confidential collection. Rocco has a collection. Rusty Peen has a collection. Amber has a collection. There's so much there. There's like 150 different products. So go check out the Amber Live store. Show your support for Amber Live and help keep us going. And, and now, if you don't want a mug. They're on T-shirts and tote bags. Uh, you know, show show your love for Amber and show the public you support Amber. And people go like, "Hey, where'd you get that? I've never seen that before." Because this is the only place you can get these items. So you know, snag a T-shirt, snag a tote bag. Yes. And uh, now let's get back to that incredible interview, part two.
If this sign makes you as anxious as it does me, I can help you. You can be a part of making a commercial against what this sign represents and for trans and queer youth. Donate to purchase a portion of a second, a single second of production time for a 30 second commercial to support LGBTQ youth during the upcoming election. Our youth have been seriously harmed by anti-trans and anti-LGBTQ legislation sweeping the U.S. In fact, the Washington Post just reported that in states with restrictive anti-LGBTQ laws, hate crimes in schools have quadrupled and are rising even higher. Calls to LGBTQ lines have doubled with anti-LGBTQ laws and rhetoric named as the new number one call for help. On day one, I will revoke Joe Biden's cruel policies on so-called gender-affirming care. I will ask Congress to pass a bill establishing that the only genders recognized by the United States government are male and female, and they are assigned at birth. Donate at GoFundMe, where your donation can be anonymous, and we've set up a 501c4 social welfare nonprofit to make this commercial. But we have to hurry. This is an emergency, and the future of LGBTQ youth depends on you, and not on this. So welcome back, James. So tell me about that. What do you hope to accomplish with that campaign? Well, the part of the uh, the whole effort with all of this has been to get things out before the election. Uh, I'd love to be able, and I'm not just, I'd love to be able to, we are going to get a 30 second commercial out prior to the election um, to run. And I'm pretty sure now Pennsylvania is gonna be our state. Pennsylvania is a swing state. Um, And so I want to get a commercial, whether that commercial is based on this story that I'm working on now or a dramatic narrative, time will tell and budget will tell because uh, uh, one is a lot less expensive to produce than the other. But uh, the goal is to get it out there and uh, to target a specific swing state. And right now it looks like Pennsylvania is that state. Okay, the campaign is for production of the commercial. What about airing the commercial? Well, originally, I uh, I went to GoFundMe, and originally I had uh, a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar budget, thinking that about thirty or forty thousand dollars might go to the production of it, and then the other two hundred thousand, two hundred plus thousand would go running it in a specific market. But we didn't get much response from GoFundMe, uh, and, and fundraising, crowdfunding is always hard; it always is. Yeah. But that two hundred fifty thousand dollar figure, I think was so off-putting to people that they may not have even wanted to, to donate at all. So my goal right now is let's just make enough, let's just get enough in there so I can make the commercial, okay, make the spot, and then we'll try to get to the next leap of, uh, of, of getting it broadcast and raising the money for that, going to uh, individuals and organizations who are pumping money into a state. And there is a lot of money out there that is, that is, that is angling for these specific uh, swing states. Right now, there's a lot of electoral uncertainty out there. We don't know exactly what the landscape is going to look like, but the last three to four months, boy, it's going to be a horse race. And uh, I'd like to be, I'd like to have our tiny little commercial or whatever it is out there and part of that horse race, because again, I, I feel like that this, this is a, this is a subject that I'm really passionate about and feel like We've got to we've got to do everything we can because if that other guy gets in there, if the if we see that buffoon uh, of a president uh, get in there again, which I can't believe, it's hard for me to believe that a third of the country thinks that this yeah. this is a good idea. But yeah. if he gets in there again, it is just going to be tragic for our democracy, for our country, and really super tragic for LGBTQ youth uh, and trans teens. It's just and so, boy, I, I feel like it's an all hands on deck moment where that everybody needs to be uh, in the game. And that's that's what I'm trying here. And so far, we're not doing awful. We've we've raised about fifty six hundred dollars, I think, is what the last uh, total was. And so I'm really grateful to the uh, uh, 45, 46 people who have donated so far. But we've got a long ways yet to go It's still, you know. Um, another twenty five thousand dollars to raise twenty five thirty thousand, um, which you know it's it's always a slog. I've been doing this for you know Amber, you would know uh, for yeah. close to 
25 years and uh, every time it's hard and uh, every time it's a slog. And so it's, it happens one person at a time. And uh, there, there are some things that have changed with crowdfunding in the last uh, few years. Um, uh, the news media doesn't like uh, running stories about crowdfunding anymore. So it's been hard to get any kind of media attention, but, uh, but we'll see, we'll see. I'll, I'll keep plugging and chugging at it. Well, James, while you're plugging and chugging at this for, for the cause, you also have a personal battle going as well. Share with us yeah. about that. Well, um, I, about five years ago, right before the art, uh, hop, um, I started getting this pain in my back. And uh, I went and uh, had it checked out. And one thing led to another and another and another. And come to find out, I had uh, a tumor in my spine, or right off my spine. Uh, and it was called a malignant peripheral nerve sheath tumor, which actually arose out of uh, testicular cancer that I had um, almost 35 years ago when I was in my uh, uh, 20s. Um, and at that time I had, uh, the cancer removed and they gave me radiation treatment. Radiation treatment caused this new cancer. Um, and it's a rare cancer. It's a pretty deadly one. Um, uh, I, I think, uh, there are like the statistics are, there's literally like a, less than a hundred people get it a year and, um, uh, or something like it. It's, it's really rare. And, um, uh, uh, the survival rate also too is really low. It's it's like a twenty three percent survival rate for a five year period. Uh, I just crossed over my five years, so that's that's a good thing. It's stage four, so that's not a good thing. It uh, means it's 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 you know gravitated to other places in my body, my lungs and whatnot. Um, but it's it's a it, it's not it's not being aggressive. It's it's my oncologist says it's it's being nice. So I'll take that as a cancer, you know, I'll, I'll take that. And, and while it's doing its thing, I'm going to be out there doing my thing and fighting the good fight. And, and if anything, to be honest with you, Amber, the cancer has ignited me somewhat um, because, you know, geez, if the, the, we all know the clock is ticking, but yeah. for me, the clock is ticking especially loud, if you will. And um, I feel like, gosh, you know, I've got these, I'm in the last quarter here and I've really got to, to work hard to make some things happen because there are some things I want to have happen uh, before they draw the final curtain. So, uh, uh, and one of those is, is getting out there and, and uh, making a project that will help uh, suicidal uh, youth. Can I, can I tell you a quick story? Please. Um, Years ago, when I first started out, I was a high school teacher, and um, um, I, ha I taught in a really rural community just uh, outside of Appalachia um, in Virginia, and uh, it was a great community. I loved it, very rural people, um, but they had lots of problems like all rural communities do, and, and one of the problems they had was uh, alcoholism, and um, I had a student whose parents were uh, alcoholic and he was very much uh, suicidal at the time. And he would come into my class and he had this, this awful, awful bruise often right in the center of his forehead. And uh, I would say, you know, what, what happened there? What happened to you? And he said, I was hitting myself with a hammer, hoping that I could kill myself. Well, it was, I was just, I was my, it was my first year teaching. I was just beside myself. And I went to the guidance department said, look, this kid is, is suicidal. And he, here's the, the, you look at his head and he's just depressed. And oh my gosh, we got to do something for this kid. And, and at the time, you know, there wasn't a lot of support for kids in that mm -hmm. area. And students at schools, like, like this kid was, he didn't get help from the school. The school thought, well, that's, that's not our problem. That's social services or that's, and so I made a pact with myself. I said, well, if this kid kills himself, I am going to commit the rest of my life to doing things, doing all I can do to help suicidal teens, helping who suicidal kids. Well, somehow, by the grace of God, this kid didn't kill himself and slowly made it, you know, from being a sophomore to a junior and finally graduated. 
And uh, that was certainly warmed my heart. So I didn't have to dedicate my life to um, suicide prevention. But at this end of my life, at this at this late quarter, you know, I feel like, OK, I can bring that back out and bring that promise back out and I can do something here. This is something that I can actually do. And uh, and I feel I really do believe in my heart of hearts. It's something that I can do and that all of us can do. Um, we know that politicians respond to pressure, especially media pressure, especially pressure from the public. And I believe that things that we do on this box, that things that we do on social media, things that we do in, 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 in getting these stories out can move people. And I am so, so desperate to move people on this story. Just since I've been working on this story, there have been two kids in Lancaster who have killed themselves. And uh, I feel like, man, is the time... Time is ticking here, and we've got to we've got to do this, and we've got to do it in a hurry to prevent any more uh, trans suicides. Anyway, there I am on my soapbox again. <laughs> James, thank you so much. Our best thoughts are with you on your project and your thank health. You. Uh, we hope there's many more years and many more projects that you take on because uh, you're a good person, James. Thank you. Uh, well, thank you so much, Amber, and uh, good luck uh, with uh, your. Uh, your show here, man. It sounds like you've just crossed a big threshold too, not that long ago. So uh, uh, we're up to about two hundred episodes. Yeah. <laughs> wow! Wow! Awesome. Well, congratulations. Yeah. Thank you very much, James. Thank you.